So what are the most horrific penalties in the NHL? And why might it be the most horrific? Could it have been Dale Hunter's cowardly attack from behind? That was just a dirty play by Hunter. Rafi Torres' blindside hit on Jacob Silverberg. Matt Cook liked to give to Tyson Berry. Here. To face, you can't make that hit. Are the most horrific penalties in the NHL. At number 20, we're going to start it off strong from an unexpected source. Pavel Bure is one of the greatest per game goal scorers in the National Hockey League history. Please welcome Pavel Bure, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in the players category. And he's in the Hall of Fame because of it. Mr. Bure had 437 goals in 702 games, topping 50 goals four times and reaching 60 twice. This right winger was nicknamed the Russian Rocket because like a rocket, he sped. But on May 4th, 1994, in Game 2 of the Western Conference Final between his Vancouver Canucks and the Dallas Stars, Murray got just a quite bit annoyed as Shane Shirla of the Dallas Stars taking physical liberties with the Canucks players and Burry then used his speed to deliver this atrocious elbow as the referee Andy Van Hellman either did not see the elbow or agreed with Burry's form from a frontier justice stand because no penalty was called. Sherla, who was not injured, refused to shake Burry's hand at the end of the series, which was won by Burry and the Canucks. Oh, and Burry also scored two goals in that game, which gave Canucks a victory of 3 to nothing. And of course, the Canucks advanced to the Stanley Cup's final in which they lost to the New York Rangers in 7. First goal, only 2 minutes and 54 seconds apart to establish the record. Number 19 features two Hall of Famers. It also happened in 1994, but during the regular season, Marc Messier had almost 700 goals and Mike Vidano over 550, but neither of those stints meant anything when Messier, then with the New York Rangers, knocked out the Dallas Stars Medano with this brutal hit from behind. Medano suffered a concussion and cuts to his head. In addition, when being forced to load into the ambulance, Medano's EMS carrier tripped over on one side falling to the floor, literally adding insult to injury. Messier was suspended for two games. Next up, at number 18, is the hit that launched a rivalry. That's right, Claude the Muse hit on Chris Draper sent Draper's face first into the boards during the deciding Game 6 of the 1996 Western Conference Final. The Detroit Red Wings Draper suffered a broken nose, a broken jaw, and a broken cheekbone, as well as a concussion. The Mew of the Avs was suspended for the first two games of the subsequent Stanley Cup Final. And of course, the Red Wings were incensed that the suspension was not longer but the Avalanche were still able to sweep the Florida Panthers in the Cup Final to win their first ever Stanley Cup. But the Avs had not heard the last of Detroit, because that hit began a heated rivalry between two teams that lasted into the early 2000s. The penalty at number 17 was not to the head and was perpetrated by a player making his first of three appearances on this list. Over a 16-season career, from the 1998-99 season to 2014-15, Matt Cook did make a name for himself as a physical, checking-line center who always played on edge. He dished out dangerous hits that hurt people. He gave a knee-on-knee -knee hit right to Colorado Avalanche defenseman Tyson Berry. This solid knee-to-knee -knee hit came in Game 3 of the first round 2014 playoff series between Cook's Minnesota Wild, his fourth team, and Colorado. Barry's injury was a sprained MCL, giving Cook a suspension for seven games. The Avs defenseman had this to say about Cook. I don't know if there's a place for him in this game. It's disgusting what he's done to guys' careers. Now, from an attack on opponent's legs to an airborne strike at number 16. But wait, this is hockey, right? How the hell can there be danger from above? Well, 
During an exhibition game on September 25, 2007, the Philadelphia Flyers' Steve Downey showed us by launching himself at the head of the Ottawa Senators, defenseman Dean McCammon. Downey was just a prospect trying to make the Philadelphia Flyers' open day roster. And I guess the coaching staff really likes dirty hits. I mean, it's the Flyers, right? The, the Broad Street Bullies? But anyways, he did make the team. But guess what? Before he'd even played his first NHL game, he was already out for a 20-game suspension that he served because of this massive hit. And for McCammon, he suffered his second concussion within a few months because McCammon also had a concussion during the previous season's Stanley Cup playoff. Well, that puck is chipped by. Charles got let go there. But number 15 is a player whose physical stature is perhaps the most unique most impressive and the most dangerous in NHL history. Defenseman Zdeno Chara is six foot nine, and he played for 24 seasons in the NHL. He played with the Islanders, the Ottawa Senators, the Washington Capitals, and of course, the Boston Bruins. And he weighed 250 to 270 pounds, making this Slovakian-born Chara even more dangerous was that he was the son of former Olympic Greco-Roman wrestler Zdenek Chara. And of course, the older Chara made sure that his son would be able to defend by himself and trained him in the wrestling discipline. If that's not enough, in addition to the cardio training necessary to be an NHL player, Chara was also an avid cyclist. As part of his training each summer, after the Tour de France had been completed, Chara would cycle the Tour de France on his own. So what I'm saying is that Zdeno Chara would not really have to do anything special to hurt an opponent during his career. So, it seems almost unfair here how while he was in Boston against the Montreal Canadiens, Max Pacioretty went into the board and applies a bit of force himself. And, to use a professional wrestling term, runs Pacioretty head into the turnbuckle, or a stanchion in the arena between the benches. Pacioretty suffered a concussion and a vertebrae fracture. Chara received a five-minute major penalty and the game misconduct but was not suspended. Chara also ran a marathon under four hours, and this was after he retired in 2023. But don't think that Charles' skills are only physical. He speaks seven languages, has a finance planning degree, and a real estate license. Speaking of using the barriers between the ice and the crowd, we have number 14. A couple of years before his most famous transgression, which we will get to later, the Washington Capitals' Dale Hunter slams the head of Philadelphia Flyers' Gord Murphy right against the glass behind the net on February 10th, 1991. It looked pretty bad, but Murphy, being tough as balls, did not mess a shift. Hunter was only suspended for four games after this play. He's gonna get it. He jumped. Another incident that saw an unfortunate player being slammed into the glass is number 13. Hitting the glass was no choir boy himself in October of 2005. The Toronto Maple Leafs Darcy Tucker. Setting him there was a forearm from Atlanta Thrasher's defenseman Andy Sutton. If you would have taken a poll of NHL players at the time, Tucker would probably have been considered the dirtiest player in the NHL, whereas Sutton was probably seen as a hardworking and aggressive player. But in this case, it was Tucker who got the bloody face, which required several stitches. And Sutton got a match penalty, game misconduct, and a four-game suspension. And another hit, and it's walked off in front. Wait, wait, wait. Tom Wilson has been considered one of the most dangerous and something dirtiest hitters in the league over the past few years. He is number 12, and it seems that this one in an exhibition game against Oscar Sundquist of the St. Louis Blues was absolutely not necessary because he gifted this man a concussion, a shoulder injury, and facial laceration. Wilson was suspended for 20 games. We're back, baby. At number 11, we got the one and only Matt Cook. This time, as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins on March 20th, 2011. 
in the third period of a game against the New York Rangers, Puck skates across the ice to deliver an elbow to the head of Rangers defenseman Ryan McDonough. Cook was assessed a five-minute major after telling McDonough he's a done. The Rangers scored twice on this five-minute power play and won the game 5-2. Luckily, McDonough was not injured and returned to the game. Number 10 is the first of two horrific penalties committed by Rafi Torres, who was suspended a number of times for illegal hits throughout his career. This one came on April 17, 2012 in Game 3 of the first round playoff series between Torres' Arizona Coyotes and the Chicago Blackhawks. With the puck nowhere in the area, he laid out Chicago star Marion Hosa with this blindside shot to the head. Hosa, who is one of the great two-way players in NHL history, scored 525 goals, won three Stanley Cups, and is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. He suffered a concussion and was not cleared to play until the following December. Though, due to the NHL lockout the following season, it did not begin until late January. It was Torres' third suspension for an illegal hit, and at this time, it was 25 games. Number 9. The Fetsman, Kyle McLaren of the Boston Bruins. On April 26, 2002, in Game 4 of a first-round playoff series against the Canadiens, McLaren used his left forearm to hammer the head of Montreal Canadiens, Rashard Zadnik, who sustained a severe concussion and a broken nose, and a bruised throat, and a cut under his right eye, and missed the remainder of the playoff. McLaren was suspended for the rest of the series. Number 8 happened in the 2011 Stanley Cup Final. In Game 3, Vancouver Canucks defenseman Aaron Rose caught the Boston Bruins center Nathan Horton with this quite unnecessary shot to the head. Horton suffered a severe concussion and missed the remainder of the series. Rome was suspended for the final four games, which is the longest in the NHL Finals history. Number 7 came on December 18, 2021, when the Chicago Blackhawks' Brett Connolly leveled the Dallas Stars' Tanner Carey with a straight shoulder to the head. Oh, and guess what? The puck was nowhere in vicinity. Carroll was carried off the ice on a stretcher and taken to a nearby hospital in precaution. Connolly was assessed a five-minute major, a game misconduct, and was suspended for four games. Number six is the rare situation in which Cook was the victim of a horrific penalty. Duncan Keith, who played the most of his career with the Blackhawks, won two Norris trophies as the NHL's best defenseman and won three cups and will likely be elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame. First year eligibility. Keith was not known for being a physical player, but he did have a mean and dirty streak. And this elbow to Cook's head is proof that he means dirty business on this streak. Cook also learned that he had to take some of what he himself dished out. Keith was penalized to the elbow, but not suspended. Serves him right, doesn't it? But this time, Keith was also penalized and suspended at number 5. It was another elbow to the head, and on March 21st, 2012, it was the head of Vancouver Canucks, Daniel Sedin. He sustained a concussion and missed 12 games. Keith was only assessed a 2-minute minor, but was suspended for 5 games. Number 4 is Cook yet again in his more familiar role as the perpetrator. And believe it or not, Cook did not even receive a penalty nor a suspension for this totally unnecessary blindside shoulder to the noggin of this Boston Bruins Mark Savard on March 7, 2010. Savard was left with a grade 2 concussion and missed significant portions of the following season. It was also the beginning of the end for Savard's playing career. Number 3 is courtesy of a man who usually used his fist to make a name for himself. But this time, the Toronto Maple Leafs' Ty Domi used his elbow on the head of New Jersey Devils future Hall of Fame defenseman Scott Niedermeyer during the 2001 playoffs. 
Niedermeyer was knocked unconscious. Dummy was then kicked out of the game and suspended for the rest of the playoff series and the first eight games of the following season. Domi then said it was in retaliation for something Niedermeyer had done in a prior game between the two teams. He later made a hilarious joke apology filled with tears saying it was the dumbest thing I did in my career. Welcome back, Rafi Torre. This time, it was the hit to the head of Anaheim Ducks Jacob Silverberg during an exhibition game in early October 2015. Because he was a repeat offender, Torres was suspended 41 games and forfeited over $440,000 in salary. Last but not least, we're at number one, the moment you've all been waiting for. And on this penalty is the Washington Capitals' Dale Hunter's attack from behind on the New York Islanders' Pierre Turgeon during the 1993 playoff. On April 28, 1993, Turgeon stole the puck from Hunter and scored the game and series clinching goal with Hunter trailing behind. But as soon as Turgeon began celebrating, Hunter hits and attacks Turgeon from behind. Turgeon suffered a separated shoulder and missed all but the last game of the Islanders' next series. Hunter was suspended for a then NHL record 28 game. So there you have it, 20 horrific penalties in the NHL. Which do you think was the most horrific? Leave a comment on the one you think was the most brutal penalty. And if you like this video, don't be a bender, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm help us grow, and see you next time.